Welcome back to the Olympic Ice Hall. There's a great atmosphere here tonight. We've had fireworks outside and a lot of people trying to get their hands on tickets for this medal performance. The last flight tonight, Barb, includes the Canadians and the leaders from the unified team. It looks like the Canadians got a good draw skating last. I have to say that skating last will benefit, benefit Lloyd and Isabel. And not only because it's a plus to skate last, but because the, fir the three skaters before them are skating slow programs, whereas L Isabel and Lloyd have a very quick pace, fast, exciting program. They're going to come out. I think they're going to light this place up. Now, they've just resurfaced the ice. The next flight will come on. And, Paul, that includes the two other Canadian pairs uh, who have had mixed results here so far. I'm sure Ball and Wirtz are quite pleased. Huff and Ladre skated well but didn't get the results they were looking for. Well, Christine and Doug skated a program which the audience loved. After their performance, they started to pound these seats and were really, really just so excited about their skate. However, they find themselves in ninth place. They've got a strong, long program, and I think if they skate it well, they can remain in ninth and maybe even gain a spot. And with Ball and Wirtz, they're so exciting to watch. They've got some great technical things, and if they skate well, I think they could crawl up into the top ten as well, which would mean all things going as well as we can expect. We could have three teams in the top ten at this event. It's been interesting in the last 48 hours and even in the time leading up to the Olympics, the matchup had been clearly drawn between Mishka Tunic and Dmitriev and Brasur and Eisler. And I think we've forgotten about Bechke and Petrov, who are veterans. Now, they haven't made the big impact in the past, uh, Barb, but uh, they have to be reckoned with. Well, it's tough to call Bechke Petrov because they're always great in practice. They always do a great short program, but they have yet to come out and really excite us in the long program. I don't know, but I think one of these days they're going to be due for a good one. Could be tonight. Well, they stand in second place. Their compatriots are first, and the Canadians are third right now. But whoever wins the long program will win the gold medal tonight. We'll have more from Alberville after this break. Welcome back to the Olympic Ice Hall. Warm up for Group 3 of the five groups competing tonight, including two Canadian pairs. Ron McLean is standing by in the kiss and cry. And Ron, did you get a sense of how the two Canadian pairs are feeling? Well, Chris, you spoke about the excitement outside this building tonight, the fireworks and people demanding tickets, bands playing, and just in behind underneath the stage. Uh, Christine Huff and I'd say Chris Wirtz are the two calm halves of the pairs that are going to be skating in the next couple of minutes. Lloyd Eisler is also in behind just now as uh, walking about with his skates. Uh, I haven't seen Isabel yet, but uh, so many of the Canadian athletes are on hand. Eric Lindros is in the crowd this evening to watch what's about to take place, and I'll be trying to grab a word uh, immediately after performances and also try to send many of the skaters up your way and back to the broadcast center a little later on. All right, Ron, thanks very much. I'm a little surprised that Doug LaDre would be nervous because he usually seems like a pretty cool cat. And how about her? She's very cool. There's Sherry Ball, a quick look, and, of course, Christine Huff getting ready. Sherry won't be 17 until next Saturday, but she's taken everything in stride. And there we see Christine Huff preparing for her program as well. Mandy Butzel. Butzel and Raschenbach, the German pairs are here, and Jenny Mino and Scott Wendland of the United States will also be skating in this flight as Christine Huff checks in. And there are Raschenbach and Butzel of Germany. Well, it's an interesting draw for Sherry and Chris in light of the fact that they're skating last in this flight, which means there will be three teams skate ahead of them, which means their rest after this warm-up could be in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 minutes depending on how quickly the event moves along and they like to come out and skate early so they're going to have to go backstage stay warm stay loose so they can come out and give their best performance at the european championships butzel and russian back had some problems in their long program there's sherry ball she checks in with her coach and her partner's older brother chris wirtz or check that paul wirtz chris wirtz of course is her partner and uh, Ron said he was a little excited prior to the uh, program, and that doesn't surprise me because he's been wearing his emotions on his sleeve throughout this week. Well, they've absolutely amazed me here this week. They've been skating clean performances, clean programs every single day in practice and just looking really good and, and have really made an impression at this year's, at their first international, well, their first Olympics together. There's a look at Chris. I'm surprised that Sherry has been as casual about this warm-up. She's been standing at those boards for almost a minute now. Obviously, she feels very comfortable, probably as warmed up as she wants. 
and it's going to be interesting to see because that's unusual. They've got the advantage of going out and really pushing out a big warm-up. What did you try to accomplish in a warm-up, and did it vary from what place you skated from? We always had a, a set program of what we would do in the warm-up, and if we had extra time, then we might do a couple extra things, but it depends on whether you're skating first in the warm-up or whether you're skating a little le later as to how much time you use in the warm-up. Well, they're the youngsters, but they look so poised, and they have been in practice as well. We had over 2,000 people at the ice hall this morning for practice. There's Isabel Brasseur looking on with her father, Gil. Isabel's mother's also here, and she will skate in about an hour and a half from there. Well, and all she's of, getting good luck wishes, of course. All of the Canadian teams here have really won the audience over because after every practice, they'll all get together at center ice and line up in a row and acknowledge the audience. They'll give them the big team bow, and they've really, really warmed up to this French audience. They made a lot of friends here this week, Ball and Wurtz, as well as the other Canadians. It's an interesting crowd here at Munich last year. The Canadians really did dominate in the stands. There was a very pro-Canadian feel. Many more Canadians are here tonight than we had during the first night, and yet there is representation from all around the world. In fact, there's a large Japanese delegation here tonight, and they cheered on their Japanese pair earlier today. But right now, the stage is set for Mandy Wutzel and Axel Rauschenbach. They're from Germany and come in to this long program in 10th place. Mandy from Chemnitz, which is...